that's uh, that's really good. What a what a great night, and uh, great to have some friends back there at Table Twenty Four. Good to have you guys here, and, and of course uh, my family right here. I, I have to start by apologizing to my wife Alice. Um, this has just been one heck of a week. You know, it's the Hall of Fame. I've been working on my speech, and those doggone Chicago Cubs are in the World Series. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. So if you just wait till Sunday night at 11 o'clock, open your door and look outside because pigs are gonna fly and hell's gonna freeze over, baby. The Cubs are gonna win the World Series. We'll be watching that game soon. And then as a lot of you know, I'm going to be opening a Culver's restaurant here in Bloomington soon. And we've had some terrific meetings this week, and poor Alice has had to deal with all that in one week. So, honey, I apologize for uh, me being everywhere but where I should be, and uh, I hope you understand. She's been a wonderful support for all these years, as the kids have. And, and, and here's an envelope. The kids have seen me go out to give speeches, and they say, Dad, you got your envelope with your notes? Yeah, I got it. That's all there is right there. The rest is, is ad lib. So here it is, kids. Um, knock on the door early this morning about nine and it was a, a lady delivering some flowers and I thought oh how nice isn't that wonderful somebody's thinking of us and um, Alice goes to the door and sure enough they are red flowers roses and they're addressed to her I'm thinking what the heck is going on and uh, we read the note and it's congratulations Alice John you too uh, on the Hall of Fame it's from Tom Cream and the IU staff. Now there's a guy who knows. It's the wife that has to deal with all the speeches, all the TV games, all the stuff that you have to leave for, and he, he sends her the flowers and includes me in them as well. So uh, one of the guys I need to thank here is Tom Cream for the great job he's done over these last eight years. I have been to practice already. And other than Colin Hartman not participating, we got a great team, and it's going to be wonderful. Colin's going to be there for uh, mental support with the guys. I think you're going to be happy about this year's team. Um, I'm in discussions right now with Fred Glass. Uh, remember in the south side of Assembly Hall, I had those wonderful pictures of all the Hall of Fame drawings, just absolutely wonderful with the red stripe for the new ones. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to happen yet with the renovation. By the way, thanks to Cindy Simon and Paul Scott, $40 million to make that place look great. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> but what, uh, what Fred and I are discussing is um, I am the first Uni Indiana University Athletic Hall of Fame member who was not a starter on their team. And so we're going to have a starting for a section, and we're going to have a subsection over here. So <laughs> we'll get that worked out. And... Uh, and, and then all the other subs can be in there with me as well. Um, and how about Bob Hamill? Thank you, Bob Hamill came up with that nickname all those years ago. Bob, it's still sticking with me. I love it. I love it. So we all have that very unique story of how Indiana University came a part of our lives. And, uh, you know, I'm just a Polish kid from the west side of South Bend. And, and I'm at St. Joe High School averaging 1.5 points per game on the freshman team. Of the 20 guys on the team, I'm the 17th best player, according to my freshman coach. <laughs> and, and I'm going nowhere. And you know how things just start to change. And Bob Donawald, my high school coach, a terrific guy, kind of took me under his wing and said, here, kid, this is what you got to do. Here's how you shoot. We're going to get you the ball. And I averaged 29 points a game as a senior in high school. It was the greatest leap in high school basketball history for, for a player. And I'm all set to go to Notre Dame. I mean, I live in South Bend. Notre Dame's a great school. It's across town. I got a scholarship offer to go. I can't believe it. This is fantastic. I go to the banquet. They honor Austin Carr as a great player there. They introduced me as a prize recruit. I was so excited. And they fired the coach the next day. <laughs> and they hired Digger Phelps, all right? And Digger said, no way. We're playing East Coast ball. Call him up and tell him he can't come. And they did. They said, I'm sorry, you're not coming to Notre Dame. And there was a young coach at Indiana who had just gotten the job, Bob Knight. And um, he came to the house in South Bend, and we talked a little bit. 
And I remember after he left, I, I talked to my high school coach. I said, Coach, you know, this Indiana program, that's really the big time. And I'm looking at mid-major schools. You know, what, what should I do? And he said, well, if you go to a mid-major school, you're going to play a lot and you're going to get a good education. He said, you go to Indiana, you're going to get a really good education, but you may not play. You may sit the bench your whole career there because they got some really good guys there, you know. And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I've been there and I've seen that place. I would go to Indiana and get a degree even if I never got to play. And he said, okay, we'll get it worked out. And, of course, Coach Knight offered me a scholarship, and, and I got to come. And I got to play as well. So it was the best of both worlds. And a special thanks to Pete Trigovich from East Chicago, Washington, and to Jerry Nichols from Greenwood, Indiana, who both turned down my scholarship before it was offered to me. <laughs> and, and Coach Knight was stuck with me as third choice. And I'll never, I can't thank him enough for doing that. I bought Trigovich dinner six months ago. I said, thank you, Pete. Uh, and then you're here. Like Sarah said, you're here at Indiana University. What a fantastic place. Going to the business school, meeting some great guys. Jimmy Cruz, a teammate of mine, is here. Just terrific teammates. Colin knows what I'm talking about. You get some good guys, and, and it's amazing what you can do. The 12 of us out there running around, trying to practice, trying to figure out what coach is trying to do, how, how this defense thing works, the offense, and, and it's hard work. I mean, I could barely get through practice every day physically. It was just I'm running and I'm huffing and puffing, and, and we'd get through it. And then we'd win that weekend. we say, that's pretty good. And the next weekend, the next weekend, and as Don said, we just had some unbelievable times. And uh, that super sub thing kind of stuck on well. And so it's before my senior year. And Coach Knight calls me aside, and he says, Laz, I, I played Ohio State on some really good teams, and I never got to start. He said, I always wanted to be a starter. I could never crack the lineup. He said, you've earned the right to be a starter. He said, if you want to start this year, I'm going to start you at guard with Buckner. And I'm thinking, wow, this is really good. Well, I'm also thinking about this guy who you all saw last year here, Bobby Wilkerson, six foot seven, defensive gem, jump center for the team, and I could just see him starting to come along and thinking, Coach, you know, I got this pretty good gig going right here coming off the bench. Why don't you put Wilkerson in there, and he and Buckner will bother them really bad, and then I'll get in, and they'll, I'll get to play. He said, all right, that's what we're going to do, and I did. And, and so you think about those, those great teammates I had, and that's the reason we had such good, such good teams. And we still look back at those years as, as the years that, that really started it all. I, I graduated, and uh, on that 75 team, eight guys played in the NBA. Eight guys from that team were in the NBA, okay? Absolutely wonderful. I was the first guy cut of those eight guys, okay? <laughs> so I'm back here, and Coach calls and says, hey, I want you to be our color commentator for IU basketball. I said, Coach, I'm pretty shy. You know that. He said, no, no. He said, I know you understand the offense and the defense. I want you to be our TV guy. And I said, okay, coach, what do I have to do? He said, when the red light comes on, start talking. All right? <laughs> Thanks, coach. He does that. He did that a lot. Remember, Fish? He did that a lot. And, uh, and so I'm in TV. By the way, Don Fisher's first year covering IU basketball was my junior year in, in college. And we had a pretty good team there. And then two almost undefeated teams in a row. You talk about giving a guy a head start right here. This guy right here got a head start, okay, with our teams. Um, it all started when I was seven years old, and, and Tom Bollard is here, and, and he was at this game, okay? This is, in, this is in Iowa City, Iowa, in January of 1961. We're living in Iowa. My dad never played basketball, went to South Bend Central. He has two tickets to an IU-Indiana basketball game in Iowa City. We go to the game. The Hawkeyes run out on the floor, and I get up and start yelling, screaming. We live in Iowa. And my dad grabs me by the arm, sets me down. He said, son... You're a Hoosier. No matter where we live, you'll always be a Hoosier. I thought, whoa, that, that's something. He, uh, he unfortunately passed away uh, that November, and we moved back to South Bend, the very house that he had raised us in. And 10 years later, in the spring of 71, Bob Knight comes to that house and offers me a scholarship to go to Indiana. And in that game, Tom Bollard, Gary Long, Jimmy Rail, guys that I now know, played in that game, but as a seven-year-old, I got to see my first Indiana game. 
Uh, Ken Beckley's here. Ken and Jerry Tardy, who's passed away. I got to work at the IU Alumni Association with those guys. Absolutely wonderful place to be. I mean, I just loved IU so much and still do. It's just such a, such a, a great honor here. But I think you can see um, with the unbelievable open doors that came my way, the breaks that I got to be in this position. And, and, and for the longest time, I thought I was just the luckiest guy there was. And, and maybe luck has something to do with it, but I also believe that, that God had a plan for my life. And as Aver said, I, I have a strong faith, and it's because I know that God has his plan for me and why he wants me to start a restaurant at 63 years old, I don't know, but I'm going to give it a try, and we're going to try to make it happen. And the good news is that God has a plan for all of you as well. And my prayer tonight will be that, that you find the plan he has for you and, and you find success where he wants you as well. Thank you again so much for this wonderful honor.